Today and we're going to talk about the freely draining regime or the penetrable uh, polymer coil. So we've just talked about the, uh, the non-draining case where we treat our polymer. It's in this highly coiled state. Um, you have monomers that shield other monomers from uh, basically interacting with your solvent and thus your viscosity is lower because it doesn't interact with every monomer unit. In the freely draining case, it's a little bit of a different scenario. So in the freely draining case, our polymer is idealized. It's like an elongated, a very elongated um, kind of rod. And each monomer unit, so each, every single n number of monomer units is a single sphere. And each monomer sphere, uh, sphere excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, will not affect the fluid flow or the effective friction on its neighboring monomers. So if in you know, it's almost basically you can idealize it as like it's contour length. You just have a sphere, 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 sphere here, and the fluid flow is going to hit every single n number of monomer. There's no shielding, hydrodynamic shielding that occurs when it interacts with a fluid. So it's going to hit each n number of monomers. We'll see what that happens in a second. So when we think about the effect of friction, F, or equivalently our viscosity, uh, eta, so again, because remember, our, friction, our effective friction scales, it's effectively behaving like our, the viscosity of our material. Um, the total effective friction, thus viscosity, will be the sum of the frictional force felt by each monomer. Um, so it's going to be larger than the uh, impenetrable, the non-draining case, uh, which kind of makes sense. So this model is very, very appropriate for highly, highly, highly elongated polymers. So in very, very good solvents or polymers at high strain rates. So there's a cool example. Um, so if you want to look up, there's a molecule called von Willebrand factor. VWF. So it is a polymer uh, that is uh, basically helps in the clotting process. So you have a blood vessel. Once you get cut, this um, once you get cut, your you know the fluid flow, your heart starts to beat. The uh, flows become much 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 more strong. So the strain rates or the flow rates or your kind of shear flow rates uh, increase once you're cut. So von Willebrand factor is a polymer. Uh, well, it's a protein, but basically it's a polymer. We, we know how we you know, think about proteins and biological materials. So it's in a globular state initially. As the shear rates, or my strain, rate, my strain rates, and thus my you know, shear flow rates increase, the polymer switches from a globular state to this elongated state. And it exposes basically these binding sites uh, on this polymer. And then it will stick to your, you know, your cut surface and help clot. Um, so there are some people that have basically mutation here where um, there's no kind of binding here, and it affects the, uh, the ability to, um, you know, clot blood. So it's a really interesting parameter. But anyways, like this would be a good example. We could kind of treat uh, kind of the viscosity of this polymer. That model, the freely draining model, would be appropriate for this situation where we're in a high strain rate um, uh, kind of scenario. So just to kind of give a schematic, again, our polymer effectively looks like this, where, again, the flow can penetrate here but it's hitting every single monomer. We're not blocking or really um, kind of shielding anyone. So the friction factor for the freely drain case, we have to count for the friction of every single bead, every number of monomers. So it's fairly straightforward. Our friction, our effective friction, and thus our viscosity, is going to scale to n x2 or n to the 1 power. So this is, again, a large rumor. Our n can be, or our x2, can range from 10 to 100k. So these are large, large, high, high, high viscosity. So in the non-draining case, we saw, or non-draining, we saw that f scaled with x2 to the 1 half, or x2 to the 1 third, or even if we were in a good solvent, x2 to the 3 fifths. So again, that would be really appropriate for the non-draining. For the freely draining case, our friction scales with x2 to the 1 power, greater than. So, uh, go to the square root, that is a huge difference. So that power law difference of, you know, basically greater, you know, twice as uh, greater, that is going to lead, uh, since it scales linearly with the number of monomers, it's going to lead to extremely large friction factors and thus very, very large viscosity. So, uh, we need to kind of, again, understand when each regime is applicable or occurring. So when we have very, very high shear forces um, in the shear rates, our polymer is going to elongate, and it could be described by the freely draining model, or if we're in a very, very, very good solvent. Um, and this whole, this difference in scaling, this x2 to the 1 half and x2 here, that difference in viscosity explains our non-utility behavior of polymers. 
because when we change our shear rates, our viscosity changing as well, right? Uh, because if we change my shear rates, my polymer goes from this kind of oiled state, which was well approximated by the non-draining case when we had an ideal solvent or, you know, uh, to when I have high shear rates, I elongate my polymer, then it, be, uh, it transitions to this freely draining case. Now my viscosity increases dramatically. I'm able to run across my cornstarch. <laughs> so uh, that is, uh, and then again, when you have high molecular weight, flexible chains, highly coiled, the non-draining model is much, much more appropriate. So uh, these are kind of how our, again, freely draining case, how our scaling occurs, the theta solvents could be, you know, again, for good solvents as well, um, for the uh, non-draining case. This is for, again, really, really extreme scenarios. Um, low molecular weight polymers, rod-like polymers, highly extended, uh, high shear rates, very, 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 very good solvents. Uh, again, this would also be very good for X to the one-third or four solvents as well. So those are our freely draining case, non-draining case, and how we can run across that cornstarch bath uh, by changing our shear rates and then changing the properties of our polymer. So polymers will often behave like a non-Newtonian fluid, and that this is the kind of the fundamental atomistic length scale view of why that occurs. So uh, a really, really fun example of polymers, again, super interesting, very dynamic, can uh, really, really change their properties uh, uh, depending on you know, the local environment. So uh, it's just a nice example. So next time we are going to get into extrinsic viscosity measurements and then how we could kind of extract some critical information from curves, uh, including solvent quality uh, and even some, uh, hopefully some uh, basically K values and some molecular weights. Anyways, we'll get to that in just a second. So um, I will talk to you all next time. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and thanks. Have a good one. Bye.